I'm Florida Man, formerly known as D. Rintoul. I'm a player on the Play Diplomacy website, and a lover of the game of Diplomacy. What follows are my recollections of a game I played on the Play Diplomacy website that concluded in mid-January 2018. It was called Honor and Glory. I took over the French position in 1905, but I will begin with 1901. Spring 1901. The game began with some surprisingly aggressive moves from France, Italy, and Germany, who each seemed to attack neighbors I wouldn't generally expect them to. Fall 1901 showed only Italy had succeeded in his aggressive opening gambit, occupying Trieste. 1902. France started a war with Italy, while Italy retreated from Trieste, and Austria claimed both Trieste and Bulgaria. Russia attacked both England and Germany, with a measure of success, while Italy claimed the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Spring 1903. Austria helped Russia claim Munich, Italy moved into Portugal, and Turkey retook Bulgaria. Fall 1903. Austria took Bulgaria again, and occupied Naples and Warsaw, thanks to Italy and Russia essentially letting their guards down. England occupied Belgium, Germany retook Munich, and he made an unsuccessful attempt for Sweden. France took Piedmont and the Tyrrhenian Sea. In the retreat phase, unfortunately for Austria, the Turkish unit formerly in control of Bulgaria retreated to Serbia. Spring 1904, Austria captures Venice and Serbia, but Turkey gets into Budapest from Serbia, and also captures the Aegean Sea. England seized Holland, and prevented Germany from entering the North Sea. This is going to be a repeated thing, England and Germany bouncing each other in various sea spaces. Fall 1904. Austria finally took the last Italian home center, and also retook Budapest from Turkey. But Turkey took Greece and Bulgaria at the same time and retreated his Budapest unit to Vienna. Germany took Norway and occupied Ruhr, seemingly to be able to attack England more effectively. Spring 1905. Having lost his homeland, Italy was fortunate to successfully take Spain. Austria reoccupied Vienna and pushed France out of Tuscany. Germany occupied Sweden and returned his unit in Ruhr to Munich. Austria left Warsaw, seemingly because he wanted to form an alliance with Russia, although I'm not entirely certain. Fall 1905. Good news. France surrendered. So it was at this point that I joined the game. Picking up the surrendered French position in Fall 1905, at what I would consider its lowest point. I immediately reached out to England and Italy seeking to repair relations so I could survive the next few years. Italy had been dispossessed of his homeland, so I promised that if he joined forces with me, I would ensure he reclaimed the Italian home centers from Austria. After I successfully sold Italy on this idea, he sold England on me, so I lived to fight another year. And I didn't have to fight my neighbors at that early stage. I also reached out to Turkey to begin coordinating with him, it was pretty clear that he and Austria would be fighting for a while, especially after I got some messages back from Turkey explaining the course of events. And Austria controlled the Italian homeland, so I definitely wanted to try to coordinate with Turkey. In an apparent gesture of good faith, England vacated the channel and attacked Germany further, which made it more unlikely that he would attack me. He occupied Denmark. 1906. England, Italy, and I officially form an alliance and begin group messaging. Italy agreed to return Spain to me immediately, and Austria proposed helping me into Munich. In exchange, I helped Austria retake Naples, which Turkey was not very happy about, as he had seized it in the spring. England helped Russia take Norway, and he took Berlin, so this year essentially put Germany in the ground at the very least on his last legs, but this is really the last gasp of Germany. Turkey and Russia fought Austria together, which led to an interesting board at the end of the year. 
Spring 1907. Since I planned to fight Austria, and probably eventually stab England, and I had already attacked Turkey, I reached out to Russia to seek another possible alliance. This is my long-term planning here, because I was obviously not in a good place to work with Russia yet, and I even still wanted Austria to believe I was potentially a friend. I had complete cooperation with Italy and England at this point, which took some real worries off of my shoulders. Turkey and Russia continued to wage war in Austria, but they only experienced limited success. Fall 1907. With this trust in my partners, I completely abandoned defending my homeland. I stop worrying about that, and I occupy Piedmont, Tyrolia, and the Tyrrhenian Sea, in addition to holding Tuscany. Italy took the Ionian Sea at the same time, while Russia and Turkey seized Budapest and Trieste. And just like that, Austria, once the biggest power on the board, has collapsed. I could tell Austria was not going to recover from this, because even though he still had five centers, I could see he wasn't equipped to properly defend any of them. And Turkey, or rather Italy and I, had just spent the last year getting in position to take back the Italian homeland. As is clear from messages between me and my allies at this time, I now shift to considering Russia and Turkey as my main potential threats. Spring 1908. Despite, or perhaps because, of the fact that I see Turkey and Russia as my main opposition, I message both of them and try to develop comfortable relationships with them. I also begin planting the seeds of their betrayal of their alliance with one another. I suggest that each of them could share in a three-power draw with me in England, if only we could eliminate the odd man out. I get Italy to agree to help me occupy Rome and Venice, while I promise to support him into Naples in the fall. Germany loses his remaining centers and dies. Austria loses Serbia, in addition to most of Italy. Fall 1908. England attacks Russia. I push Turkey to do the same, and promise to join in with my allies fighting Russia. At the same time, I promise Russia he can rely on me to fight Turkey, and suggest that Russia should attack Turkey. I fulfill my promise to get Italy into Naples, while also supporting Russia into Vienna. Spring 1909. At this point, there is a great deal of chatting between me, Turkey, and Russia. They're trying to turn each other against me, and trying to turn me against the other, and I'm trying to do the same thing. It's pretty entertaining. In the end, Russia supports me into Trieste unsuccessfully. Meanwhile, Italy and I prepare for me to give Italy Rome back, and I quietly prepare to take Italian-controlled Portugal and Tunisia. Because, even though I'm keeping my word to Italy, you won't be needing those centers. England continues slowly advancing toward Russia. I watch him warily, making sure he doesn't get too close to me during the fight. Fortunately, I think he understands any movement in my direction would just look very suspicious. Fall 1909. I ultimately help Russia get to Trieste, and Turkey takes Romania at the same time, although that leads to Russia getting the Black Sea, and at the same time England takes Sweden from Russia. Turkey also took the Ionian Sea, as a part of a plan we had discussed in which I promised to split Italy with him. Of course, the idea in the back of my mind was that I was going to take over all of Italy and figure out a way to cut Turkey out. Spring 1910. I double down on my alliance with Russia, telling him that I've built a fleet in Brest so that I can help him with England. I continue promising Turkey to work with him against Italy and Russia, but he's quite naturally suspicious. He points out that I'm playing him and Russia against each other, and that I seem to be set up to stab England, and no one can really do anything about it, and that if he and Russia aren't careful, I might solo. He's essentially reading my mind at this point, more or less. And it doesn't really matter, because England doesn't really take any defensive actions against me, and I take the English Channel and Burgundy while he continues fighting Russia and takes St. Petersburg. He does send me a ticked-off message about my treachery, though. At the same time, I betray Italy, taking back Rome, while he moves Rome and Apulia to stand off in Naples. 
And they do bounce off of each other, but that leads to Rome being destroyed when I take it. I had suggested this maneuver as a way to prevent Turkey from taking Naples, and it succeeds in that too. It seems, though, that Turkey had actually tried to warn Italy, and had entered support for Italy to move into Venice, but Italy didn't listen to him. Russia breaks into the Turkish homeland. Fall 1910. I send almost all of my units north to fight England, while he keeps many of his units in Scandinavia or northern Russia, where they're really no use. I promise Italy that I'll keep him alive and support him into Naples this season, but this time he tries for Venice unsuccessfully, without Turkish support, so Turkey takes Naples without a fight and eliminates Italy. It's a pity. I was actually going to keep my word that time. 1911. I steadily advance against England, while England continues to try to fight both me and Russia, with a few units still unfortunately pinned down in Scandinavia. Unfortunately for him, that is. Turkey unsuccessfully tries to prosecute a two-front war with Russia and me, and he slowly loses ground. 1912. To my great joy, England continues leaving two of his armies in Russia, armies that I had worried might be used to, useful to him in actually taking back some of the centers in Germany that I'm seizing. This fact, coupled with fighting Turkey, also prevents Russia from expanding enough to become a threat. Turkey completely commits to fighting Russia and not me, which allows me to reduce my presence in the Mediterranean to a token force and still retake Tunisia from Turkey. I steadily advance against England, still. 1913. I continue to steadily advance against England, but it's at this point that I'm hitting something of a wall in my fight with him. I also try to attack Russia this time, but without success. England continues to be almost as much of a thorn in Russia's side as he is in mine, which is kind of beautiful. 1914. England continues trying to slow me down, but at this point I have overwhelming force, so he can't do very much. In the Mediterranean, Russia and Turkey are still fighting each other, which gives me the opportunity to take Trieste. At this point, I'm within sneezing distance of a solo, and everyone's calculations about the game seem to change very noticeably. Further, using a fleet to make the capture of Trieste makes me vulnerable, because now I can't do anything to support my Ionian sea fleet holding in place. 1915. At 17 centers. This is a pivotal year. Or so I hope. Unfortunately, I lose Trieste even as I gain Edinburgh. If I had held Trieste in this season, I would have won the game. Spring 1916. With this season, I try to reposition for the killing blow. I manage to break through the Russians' defenses, with my unit in Silesia moving to Galicia, so that I can unpredictably attack any of four centers that are exposed to attack by a unit in Galicia. I shift my fleets around at the same time to give me a better advantage in the north, and also send one fleet south to fight in the Mediterranean just in case the enemy pushes me out of the Ionian Sea. He doesn't do it yet. Fall 1916. Finally, I take the win. Much of what I do this season to try to advance in various areas is unsuccessful. None of my units in the north get anywhere. My unit in Galicia doesn't get anywhere. But the attack from Galicia forces Russia to devote two units to preventing its advance by doing a self-bounce, and I cut the only support that was left holding Trieste in place. So I take Trieste, and the win. This was a rough game, and for me it both illuminated some flaws in my game and illustrated a number of diplomacy principles. One principle is that a person's mindset is important. People liking you, people believing they can or cannot win, is important. Another principle is that the more people left in the game, the better for someone seeking to solo. If Russia and Turkey were one united power instead of two powers fighting each other, holding the same exact centers, two or three years before the end they definitely could have stopped me. I actually told Turkey as much a few years before I won, and right after that they began collaborating in a serious way. 
Perhaps I should have kept my mouth shut. The main flaw in my own game that this conclusion showed was that my endgame play is still imperfect. I also failed to look before I leaped in deciding to attack Russia, and if they had tried to push me out of the Ionian Sea and take Tunisia or Naples, that could have gone badly for me. In short, once the victory was in sight, I started playing a little bit desperately, without the finesse of some of my earlier strategic movements. I will say I think I've gotten much better, though. I think most players would not have recovered as well as I did from where the game was when I picked it up, and even my endgame was probably better than most people could manage. That's probably a pretty substantial improvement from where I was when I began playing Diplomacy. On the whole, as is usually the case when I win, I was very happy with this victory. I hope you liked this Diplomacy commentary, and if so, I hope you will consider liking, subscribing, and check out future videos. Till next time, have a good one.